Hey guys, what's going on? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Brittany Nicole, and today we're back for another Technique Tuesday. Like I said in my first video, we're just gonna kind of work our way up the makeup chain, I guess, starting with primers. So if you didn't see last week's, I will link that down below and I'll put a card up here. I started with face primers and now we're moving into eyeshadow primers. So if that sounds like something you're interested in seeing, go ahead and keep watching. So let's start out with what in the heck is eyeshadow primer. Eyeshadow primer preps the eyelid, just like face primer. It also helps your shadows stay in place, it prevents creasing, and it preps the lid for your eyeshadow. Think of a painter, right? They're gonna prime their canvas, again, just like you do with your face. Same thing with the eyelids. Eyelids are often oily. I have the world's most oily eyelids, I feel like. So it helps keep those oils at bay because it usually dries down to kind of a powderish formula. And then it also takes care of any of that discoloration. So there's kind of five buckets to put your eyeshadow primer in. One, it preps the eyelid. Two, it takes care of any kind of discoloration or texture. Three, it helps prevent creasing and smudging. Four, it acts as a barrier between your skin and your makeup, and again, kind of helps with those oils. And five, that whole process kind of helps your eyeshadow pop. So it helps your eyeshadow look a little more vibrant, again, because you have a smooth, flat base that you're working with. Now, do you need eyeshadow primer? It's just like I talked about in my face primer video. If you feel like you're lacking something in your current routine or you feel like your eyeshadow creases a lot or your eyeshadow disappears throughout the day or like there's too much texture on your eyes and you want to take care of that, you might want to try an eyeshadow primer which will help with those situations. This is very controversial and a lot of people say don't use concealer, but I do use concealer as my eyeshadow base, eyeshadow primer. I just make sure I set it with a loose powder, a little, little, little tiny bit of loose powder to kind of take down any of the moisture from the concealer. If you just use your concealer or your foundation on your eyelids to prep, there's a chance that your oils are gonna come through because foundations and concealers aren't meant to help with, I mean, I guess if you have an oil controlling foundation, that would help control the oils on your lid, but those products aren't made for your eyes. Eyelid primers are made for your eyes, so if you really struggle with these issues, don't start with a concealer. Start with an eyeshadow primer. Go to the drugstore, pick up one from Milani. I'm gonna talk about an alter ego one today just to see if that helps with whatever situation you're dealing with. Just like I said, again, with face primer. If you're struggling currently, it's nice to add in. If you're not struggling, then you're probably fine. It's probably not something you need. When I think back to when I did makeup professionally, which I think is about eight, nine, ten years ago. I still do it occasionally, but when I did it for my full-time job, we used pretty much only MAC paint pots. There was not at all the abundance of eyeshadow primers that there are today. It just wasn't as much of a thing as it is today. So just keep that in mind as makeup trends come through the years. A lot of these things did not exist a while ago and makeup still looked gorgeous. It's all things that kind of come around as a trend. I'm not saying eyeshadow primer is a trend. I do think it goes a long way, but just something to keep in mind as new things pop up. So let's get into how you use eyeshadow primer before we go into the specific eyeshadow primers that I have. Go very light with your eyeshadow primers, okay? I can't tell you how many people I see on YouTube that P. Louise base is what comes to mind for me. I even went online actually to look at the P. Louise website and see if they had instructions on how to use it. Like a lot of it, like you see on YouTube or just a tiny bit, there's not even instructions. But every time I see someone go in with that P. Louise base, they pack that on, okay? Like so much product and I just sit there thinking, how does that not crease throughout the day? It's just like foundation. If you're going in with a full coverage foundation and the P. Louise base is supposed to be full coverage, if you pack that on like crazy, 
you're gonna crease throughout the day. I would think you would at least. I've never tried the P. Louise. Like if I go in with a full coverage foundation, I'm gonna crease in these areas. I'm a human. I emote, emote, I think that's the right word. I have creases in my skin, right? The more product you put on, the higher the chances are of creasing and eyelids are an area that tend to crease and get oily throughout the day. So I would not recommend going in with a whole bunch of product. I would recommend going in with a very, very tiny bit of product. These products are usually very emollient and spreads. So you don't need a lot. And then I recommend using your fingertips. I think the fingertips are the best tools because the body heat helps warm it up and again helps with spreadability. I personally, again, like my fingers best, but you know, there's tons of different things you can use. You can use brushes, you can use dense brushes, you can use concealer brushes, you can use your beauty blender, you can use fluffy brushes. Sky's the limit, play around with the different tools available and see what works best for you. But again, I definitely recommend starting with your fingers because that body heat just does something. Now when it comes to application, you're gonna wanna apply it all the way from your lash line and then slowly blend up to the eyebrow bone. I recommend using either a clear eyeshadow primer or a skin tone primer if you have discoloration like I do. And again, just start at that lash line and then work your way up. Again, key is just a little bit of product. You can also take that under the eye if you were gonna apply some eyeshadow under the eyes. I never do that because I have a lot of fine lines under my eyes and I don't wanna add any additional product under there. I have my concealer under there already and like I said, I go in with concealer to prep my eyes typically, so I don't need it, but if you struggled with your eyeshadow fading on your lower lash line or you had some discoloration under there, I'd recommend honestly going in and, and using your concealer, but you can apply your eyeshadow primer under there as well. And like I said, if you are going in with a concealer, make sure you set that with loose powder. If you're not, your eyeshadow primer should set down on its own and just like face primer, let that sit for a few minutes before going in with your eyeshadow. So I think I've mentioned this about 15 times now throughout this video, but my preferred method, which is controversial, is concealer. So I'm going in with the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. You can see I only go in with a very, very little amount, and I tap it out starting on the lid, and then I work my way up. Again, I like to set this, and I'm not showing this in the video, but I like to set this with a loose powder before I go in with my eyeshadow since it is a concealer and it's not meant to help control oils or anything like that. So I'll let it set down and then I'll go in with a little bit of a loose powder when I'm done with that. And you could just see how well this takes care of the discoloration on my eyelids. I have dry eyelids as it is, which is another reason that I go for this concealer. It's a hydrating concealer, so it does it dry out my eyelids anymore. One eyeshadow primer that really, really looks dry on my eyelids is the e.l.f. Putty Primer. That did not work for me at all. I don't know if they have extra product in there to take care of the oils or whatever in the skin, but that was a hard pass for me. It did not work at all. Now, if I truly am going in with an eyeshadow primer, if I've already prepped the skin and I'm just feeling crazy, I don't know. The Alter Ego eyeshadow base is one of my favorites. I love how this dries down to an invisible finish and it just helps keep those oils at bay. I like how universal this is. With eyeshadow primers, you often see a nude color which is not inclusive enough at all. So having something like this I think is very special. This is affordable. I never have any issues with the eyeshadow dragging. There have been some eyeshadow primers I've tried in the past where when I go in with my actual eyeshadow, there'll be some dragging. There's none of that with this at all. It's super lightweight as well. It doesn't make you feel like you have anything on your eyelids. The last thing I want to feel like is like I've got heaviness on my lids. I already have hooded eyes so they feel heavy enough. So I really enjoy the lightweight formula. It helps with creasing, it helps with smudging. I really, really like this formula. I think I have a 10% off coupon with them. It's not an affiliate code. I don't make a single penny. It's just to help save you guys some coin. Anytime I can do that, I absolutely want to. So I will leave that down below, but yeah 
really really good one check this out I don't have it anymore because it expired but if you wanted to grab one from the drugstore that was kind of similar although it does kind of have a little bit of a nude-ish tone to it, but I feel like it dries down fairly clear. The Milani eyeshadow primer is a good one from the drugstore. That almost has like a silicone-y base to it, so if you were extra oily in your lids like I am, that's, that's definitely a good one to try out. Next up, we have the Anastasia eye primer. I have the mini one. This one was like 13 bucks, I think, from Ulta, and I've had this for a while, and I do like it. It's water resistant. It's long wear it's a cream formula that dries down it does have a light kind of color to it which is supposed to help with the vibrancy of your eyeshadow you know how we were talking about how eye primers usually help your eyeshadows pop that's the whole theory behind this one being light I wish it wasn't this light even on my skin it looks a little too light so if you were any darker than me I don't know how this would work on you I wish they had more variety with their colors and they had a darker one as well or one that just dried down clear because the formula is really nice it supposedly reduces fine lines but honestly I don't notice a difference with that if you do have dry lids, I wouldn't recommend this one. When I have extra dry lids, this one doesn't really work for me because it does seem to dry down to kind of more of a powdery finish, if that makes sense. It's not like eyeshadow powdery finish kind of thing. It just, it dries down. And when I have dry lids, it intensifies the dryness. So wouldn't recommend this if you had dry lids, but if you had oily lids, this would definitely be a good one for you to try out. And I love that they sell a mini version because you really only need the teensiest, tinesiest, littlest, ittiest, bittiest bit of this, and it will cover your entire eyelid. All right, and then finally, the tried and true only eyeshadow primers I used to use when I did makeup professionally. We have the MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pots. I'm using the color Soft Ochre. You guys can see this is definitely pigmented. I talked about the e.l.f. eyelid primer and how that was really dry on the eye and didn't work. This is not like that. This is a lot more hydrating and can actually work on my lids. This is supposedly sweat and water resistant. I mean, I don't think your eyeshadow would really last if you like went into a pool if you had this on as a base, but I don't know. I've never tried that. I do really like how this has a tinge of color to it and does take care of any kind of discoloration I have on my lids, which like I said, I have a lot of. So if I'm not going in with a concealer for whatever reason that day, I do often grab for a paint pot. I do feel like this kind of gives you a smooth canvas as well, takes care of any kind of texture. I don't know if it's because I've been using this for so many years, but if I'm wanting, like I said, a eyeshadow primer that has a little bit of color to it, I'm gonna grab for my MAC Paint Pot. These have been around for a really long time. They last a really long time as well in this container. They don't dry out all that quick. You would think they would, but just make sure after you go in with a teensy tiny bit of product to put on the cap and you'll be golden. This does help with any kind of oils that come through. I definitely think there's a reason this has been around for such a long time. It's because it really is a good product. It doesn't irritate my sensitive eyes. None of these products actually irritate my sensitive eyes. I wouldn't be recommending something to you if they did, obviously. I think this works for dry lids. I think it also works if you have oily lids. So I think it's a really nice universal product. If you haven't tried a paint pot, get out there and try a paint pot. Don't go for the e.l.f. one if you have dry lids. If you had oily lids, maybe go for the e.l.f. one. But if you had normal to dry to oily lids, I think this will work for you. So that is it for everything I had an eyeshadow primer. Again, if you have a routine and you feel like everything works perfectly, you do not need to add an eyeshadow primer. If you feel like you're missing something in your routine, an eyeshadow primer might go a long way. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned a little bit of something. If you have any questions, as always, let me know down below. Otherwise, if you're interested in seeing any more videos from me, please subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps me a lot, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.